Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to do another delete, but this delete is going to be a more general delete. So we've been working with linked list operations and we wrote a delete at front, which always deletes the first node in the linked list if there is one, and delete at end, which always deletes the last node in the list if there is one. But what if you want to delete a node somewhere in the middle of the list? Perhaps you have a value that you want to search for, and if that value is found in a node, then delete that node. And if there are multiple values, then we'll just delete the first occurrence of that target value we're searching for to delete. So delete node, after seeing so many prior linked list operations, isn't going to look too crazy. It's somewhat similar to our insert node in order because it needs to keep track of a previous node pointer. With insert node in order, we were splicing a node in. Now we're going to have to splice a node out. All right, there are some special cases that we need to be aware of also with delete node. And the first special case we need to be aware of, I'll write this, three special cases. So the first one we need to be aware of is the list is empty, in which case there's nothing to do. The second case is the node to delete is the first node, in which case we need to update the head. Okay, we always need to be aware of keeping that head up to date. And then the last case is uh, the node to delete is not the first node. In fact, it might not even be in the list. So these are our three special cases to be aware of. Uh, special case number three uh, is kind of the heart of the algorithm, and it's going to have some things to kind of watch out for as well. All right, so let's start with an example, of course. And the example that we're going to work with is the same one we've been working with so far. So we've got this head pointer, and it points to the first node in a list of three items. So we've got three, five, and 12. All right, so let's go through each one of these cases. If the list is empty, there's nothing to do. So we can just get an early exit from the function. Secondly, the node to delete is the first node. So let's say up here that the target node we're searching for uh, contains value three. Three. Okay, so that would be the second case, right? The node to delete is the first node because it has the target value three. So if the node to delete is the first one, then this is essentially our delete at front, right? What we need to do is maintain some cur node pointer to the node we're gonna delete, update head to skip over that first node, and then we need to delete cur node, right? Properly free the memory. So that's what that would look like, case number two. We've actually already solved it. It's our delete node at front of list. All right, so number three is the little bit trickier one. All right, so I'm gonna undo everything we just did here. And now the target node we're going to delete is not the first node in the list. Perhaps it's target value 5 or 12, or maybe it's 15, and 15 is not even in the list. So let's do an example of the node, say, 5, because it's right in the middle. And then we'll code it up, and we can trace through what would happen if the node we're trying to delete say 15 or 100 isn't even in the list. So let's do number three where the node is in the list, but it is not the first node. Let's try and delete five. So we're gonna need a cur pointer and a previous node pointer in order to keep track of the node surrounding the node to delete that we need to update the links for when we splice out five. So we're gonna have 
uh, Kerr pointer, do Kerr node, which will start pointing at the first node. And then we're going to have, do blue. Then we're gonna have a prev node pointer, which is initially going to point to null. Okay, we're going to walk through the list searching for the value. We're gonna keep searching until we find it or we reach the end of the list. So let's see what this code would look like. So we're gonna have a while loop that is going to run while our cur node has not fallen off the end of the list. <coughs> so it's not equal to null and we haven't found the value we're looking for. So cur node's value is not equal to our target value. So these are reasons to keep searching. And as we keep searching, we're gonna be updating prev node and cur node. So prev node gets cur node before we do the advancement of cur node and cur node gets cur node next. So here's that code. Let's see if I can put more down in the corner. Awesome, looks good. So this is our Boolean condition. While we haven't fallen off the end of the list and we haven't found what we're looking for, keep looking. So let's trace through this. We're looking for target value five. So kernode starts at head, kernode not equal to null, that's true. Per node's value not equal to target value, three not equal to five, that is true. So we are going to update per node to point to the next node. And before we advance per node, we are going to update our prev node to point to per node. So this is the state of our list. We've got cur node pointing at five now, we've got prev node pointing at three. Next iteration of the loop, we test cur node not equal to null. That is true. Cur node value not equal to target value. That is false. Cur node's value is five right here. And we're looking for five. So we've got a match. So we break out of this loop. And now what do we do? We need to make sure that we do two things. The first is we need to update Prev nodes next to hop over cur node and point to cur nodes next. Then we need to delete this node so we don't have a memory leak. So we'll simply delete cur node. So that's the algorithm for deleting a node that's not the first node and it is found in the list. Let's code it up. I'm just going to call this uh, generally delete node and delete node does need to accept an argument, which is the integer value to search for. I'm just going to copy our delete at end and we'll use that as kind of a starting place for our general delete node. All right, so our first case is checking to make sure that there is actually some node in the list. So if there's not a node in the list, then there's nothing to delete. So we can leave this here, head not equal to null, the list is not empty. All right, the next thing we need to test is we need to test to see if uh, case two is occurring, which would be the node to delete is the first node. Okay, so let's test to see if that's the case. So if head's value is equal to our parameter value, which we'll call a target value, the one we're searching for to delete, then we have a case number two. And 
so really what we need to do here is the same thing we did for delete at front. We're going to have head, head point to head next. So we jump over the current node and then we're going to delete the current node. So current node, we initialize to head. So we're going to update head to jump over its current head, and then we'll delete that old head that current node points to. In our else body down here, we need to handle case number three. I think I'll just delete all of this to make it shorter and more clear. All right, so here we're in case number three. So the node to delete is not the first node, but might not even be in the list. All right, so if we are in here, then we are going to need a prev node in order to keep track of the previous node for updating our links should we find this target value in the list. So we're going to initialize our prev node to null. And then we're going to have our while loop, which is going to be the same while loop we had in our uh, notes where we were drawing out and tracing with diagrams. So while cur node is not equal to null, so while it hasn't fallen off the end of the list, meaning there's still something more to search, and cur node's value is not equal to our target value, meaning we haven't found it yet, then we're going to update our previous node to point to cur node, and then we'll update cur node to point to the next node. So there's our progress, progress right there towards our Boolean condition being false. Okay, so now outside of this loop, we could be here for two reasons, right? Because we have a compound Boolean condition. We could be here because cur node is equal to null, which means we didn't find the element, the target value in the list. So let's test for that. So if cur node is equal to null, then we didn't find it. If we don't find target value, then there's nothing to do. So I'm going to update this to cur node not equal to null, which means we did find it. Because then we have something to do. All right, if we did find the target value in the list, then we know that our prev node points to the node before it, and our cur node points to that node. So we're going to update prev node to skip over cur node by updating its next to cur node's next. Then we can safely delete cur node. So we're going to say prev node, its next is going to be assigned cur node's next. So we're skipping over cur node. And now we can delete her node. All right, let's test it out. And while we're here, I think I will more properly label our case one. So our case one, if we go back to our notes, is this guy right here, which is making sure that there is, in fact, something to delete. Okay, checking if the list is empty or not. All right, I will save this. We'll head over to main. I left main in the state where we have our 3512, like the example we were doing in the notes with the diagramming. And you can see that here. Let's just compile this 3512. So we're going to exercise all three cases here. So let's start with list.delete node, and we're going to delete three. So this is going to be delete first node. Then we'll display the list to make sure that we still have our 5 and our 12 and they're in the proper order. All 
All right, so we deleted three, three is gone. So now we have uh, five at the head, five points to 12, and 12 is the last node in the list. So that looks awesome. I'm gonna comment this out here and we'll do the same thing, but this time let's delete five like we did in our uh, second trace that we did. So in this case, if we're deleting five, then our list after we delete five should be three, then 12. And it looks like it is. Awesome, so we've tested two of our three cases. So let's go ahead and just keep deleting. Let's delete 12, and then we'll try to delete a value that doesn't exist. Our list is empty. Awesome. Let's try to delete 50. It's not there. There's nothing in the list. It doesn't crash. Awesome. Now let's comment all of this out and play around with that second part of our case number three, where we're searching for a node in the list. We know it's not the first node in the list, but we don't end up finding it. So this is gonna restore our state of our list back to three, five, 12. Let's search for 50, which is not in the list. Okay, nothing happens, awesome. Uh, let's try searching for say one, which would be at the beginning of the list. Nothing happens, awesome. And now let's try and do something more in the middle of the list, like four. And it looks good. All right. So this, this implementation of delete node that we just wrote involves a lot of the different aspects of previous linked list operations that we have implemented, right? Uh, this one just has a few more cases, uh, one more case to be specific uh, than some of our previous ones, but we've still got a, a pre pointer in order to do that splicing we saw in the code right here. We're splicing out five, so we need that pre pointer to jump over that node we're splicing out. And then at the end here, we're making sure that we didn't fall off the end of the list and there is in fact a node that stores the value that we're searching for. So just as a reminder, this function here, delete node, it's only going to delete the first node that has target value in the list. Now, if there were say multiple fives, maybe it was like three, five, 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 twelve, 12, this would only delete the first one. So we would have to call this function multiple times in order to delete all of the fives. Now, in the current way it's written, it returns void. It doesn't return anything. So we could adapt this to, say, return a bool true if we successfully deleted the target value in a node or false otherwise. That way we would know if there might still be another value in a node in this list to delete. So that's something to think about. How could we adapt our implementation of delete node or write an entirely new function, maybe delete all nodes that would go through the list and make sure that if we wanted to delete five, then there are no fives left over in the list because some applications might require that. All right, we have one more really important linked list operation to write and that is the destructor because right now we have a memory leak. In fact, the way this code executed and finished at the end of my last run, we've got three dynamically allocated nodes that are not freed at the end of the program. That's a memory leak. So stay tuned for the destructor implementation, destroying the entire list.